Hi, welcome to the Air Manager API tutorial video series. In this video, we're going to be looking at sliders. So here we are on the API page again. The sliders consist of uh, essentially a control to give you, um, like a potentiometer, um, a, a way of um, providing um, a sliding type action um, with a with a graphic within within the uh, air manager panel so you could use it for a throttle or a, or a light dimmer or you know something of that nature where you need to provide uh, you know a variation to the uh, to the control so the sliders um, you can um, generate with air manager um, are of the horizontal type a vertical type and a circular type so fairly self-explanatory in terms of the, the motion that you need to, um, to uh, operate um, the slider and you can see here they're very similar in terms of the arguments that they take and very similar to some of the other ones that we've covered in previous videos in terms of um, uh, having a horizontal vertical and circular uh, motion and the circular one just has a few extra um, arguments to um, take care of the uh, the circular nature of this uh, slider so um, a few different ones there for the circular one then we have a, an associated function uh, for these sliders um, saying slider set position that again that's fairly self-explanatory it enables you to set the position of the slider and I'll show you how uh, that uh, affects the operation uh, with the slider it essentially sets the position of the graphic that you're going to use um, for the slider and then the uh, common node um, type um, functions of move visible opacity and viewport rect again can be used um, with the uh, slider functions that we're not going to cover those because we've covered those previously in terms of uh, how to use them with a node and it's no different um, for the slider so let's uh, delve straight into some code that I've got set up here um, for this um, demonstration um, we're going to start just looking at the horizontal uh, one and then we'll go on to the vertical and circular one but they're very uh, similar all of them um, so we set up an ID as per uh, usual with these um, types of functions where we want to refer to the slider ID particularly the node ones where you may want to group them or you may want to use that ID to um, show visibility or affect the opacity so it's good practice to always use the uh, ID on the beginning there and then the function name itself is slider underscore add underscore HOR for horizontal and then um, within this um, function uh, now we're going to um, specify the parameters here in terms of um, what, what we want the slider to do so the very first parameter um, is the background image if you like um, so that's the image that will appear in, uh, at the back of the um, the slider graphic it won't uh, move so that may be just a, a, a sort of a section of your panel or if it's in the case of a potential it may just show the uh, sort of a line in terms of um, it would be a slider we're just going to choose nil for the moment so there is no background graphic but that can be whatever you want it to be just to appear on the back of the image that actually moves that's not the image that moves that's the static one in the background um, then we're going to say that um, we want the overall slider um, to to uh, start its X and Y position so we want it to appear um, 20 pixels from the left and 90 pixels down from the top and then the overall dimensions for the slider we want it to be 180 pixels wide by uh, 20 mix, uh, pixels high bearing in mind this is a horizontal one so I've made it uh, sort of long and not very high um, and then th we're going to call up the uh, the name of the uh, PNG um, file that we're going to use as the item of the slider that's actually going to slide so the, the the control itself the knob or or the handle that we want to actually move is going to be this one here so we're just going to use our, our little button png for the purposes of, of just showing you how that works then we're going to give it the dimensions of uh, that um, sliding graphic so in this particular case I'm just said 20 by 20 so quite small because we've, uh, we've only got a 200 by 200 instrument here as part of the tutorial that I've been using along the way but it, it will show the uh, the concept of how you use this slider and then a feet uh, a callback at the very end of the uh, the function there to basically say that when you whenever you move the position of the slider 
jumps and calls this uh, callback and then in the callback you can do whatever you want with that information now you can see it returns this um, I've called it pause um, position information uh, whenever you do touch that uh, slider control it will call back this um, function with this uh, position information and that position information varies from 0 to 1 so it's a it's a floating number so all the way from 0 all the way up to uh, 1 and you'll see what we do uh, as part of this um, little function that I've got here just for demonstration purposes we print that value out so you can see it appearing in the console here when we run the uh, code uh, and then also additionally we use this slider set position which was the other function that we looked at initially uh, at the start of the video um, to set the position of the slider so we're going to refer to the slider by its ID which is the slider ID here and then we're going to give it the uh, position information so we're going to say we want the graphic essentially uh, this graphic here to m move um, as um, we actually move the slider and I'll comment this out in a minute and show you what the difference is between not doing that and doing that so we'll run the code initially as it is uh, there um, and see what we get so you can see here um, there's our little uh, button this button.png up 20 pixels by 20 pixels and it is a horizontal slider so it's going to slide this way and you can see um, it started 20 pixels in from the um, left here and 90 pixels down um, and so our slider is uh, 180 pixels uh, long so for 180 pixels you can see now when I'm hovering over that um, little graphic there you can see I'm I'm getting a little hands uh, symbol come up there so I can actually now click on that and I can slide my little slider along 180 pixels uh, worth as it says there um, there we go that probably would be better if we set that to 10 actually and then it shouldn't go right up to the end so just getting some scaling here so 180 pixels if we come in 10 from the end it should finish 10 from the end because this is a 200 width uh, instrument and there you see I've just adjusted that so it's it's within the bounds of the uh, thing so you can see as I'm scrolling that now you can see what's happening with the return value so we're fully over to the right now so we're we're at maximum if you like so it's returning one bearing in mind that the the newest value that it returns always appears at the top of this console as we've said previously so let's just make that a little bit bigger there and you can see that as I scroll it back the value now is getting smaller till we get to about halfway and it's at about 0.5 there we go and then you scroll all the way back down to the minimum and it's now zero so that's the return value now if we comment the the movement uh, out you'll see the effect of uh, why we need to use the slider set position or wh why you may not want to um, you could um, have an almost an invisible slider if you wanted to um, doing it this way so now it's still come up in the same position again in the default now and you can see the little hand come over but this time when I click on it and I start moving to the right you can see I'm I'm sliding now and the values changing the values going up um, to, to one as I slide all the way over to the thing and then it can come all the way back down again as I'm sliding along here I'm holding the mouse button while I'm doing this because it's selected there you go um, oh, I've left it at point two so now it would be a case of sort of uh, finding that and bringing it back there we go so um, you can see there that if you don't use the slider set position it doesn't actually move the position of the uh, of the graphic um, so you may decide that you you like that and you don't want any graphic to move and it's just almost like an invisible um, slider along along there you still get the um, the callback value changing but you don't actually get the graphic changing so you need that to actually uh, change the position of the graphic but again you could use that pause value to change some other graphic not necessarily using the slider set position this graphic you could use that position to um, scale up and work out what the uh, the X and Y values would be and move another image using those X and Y values that you've calculated from this position value so there's lots of ways that you could uh, possibly uh, show or demonstrate a slider and how you want to manipulate the graphics so let's just jump straight in and have a look at the um, the vertical one very similar um, other than the fact it it's um, vertical we're just going to make that uh, 10 as we did in the last one so it should make sure it comes out nice and then we get a graphic here and that's lovely so we get uh, a little button there 
and the buttons uh, at the top this time in the middle and the slider is going to come down and go up you can see the value changing but what I forgot to do is I forgot to uncomment the slider set position so the slider set position will enable us to uh, move the graphic now when we rerun the instrument there we go slide up and down so exactly the same as the horizontal one and the vertical one uh, sorry the um, circular one you know, a little different but essentially uh, the same um, in terms of the operation so with the circular one again you can see the code is very similar here but we have an uh, an extra uh, parameter here um, we have the radius of the circle so similar to when we do we did the uh, the running circular text and the running um, uh, images in a circular machine you need to give it a radius to tell it how big the circle is uh, but these additional two parameters here that you see that I've got set as 90 and 270 they are the starting uh, angle and the finishing angle so that's where we want our or our arc of our slider to begin and, and end so we're going to start at 90 you can see it's over here in the 90 position if you if you think this is zero so there's 90 and we've said we want to it to um, slide all the way to 270 so it's going to come around in an arc of 80 so the centers here somewhere that's 80 it's going to come all the way around here and come up to 270 it's the same button image the same size and the same slider callback we've got everything uncommented there we've got the print statement there so we should see as we begin to uh, slide this uh, here um, whoops There we go. So you, we're in an arc now between those two angles that uh, we gave and you see the value has now changed because we said we wanted to start at 90. We're over this side now and that's zero. And then we want to go all the way up to 270 and that's where it becomes its maximum. So I think that's it really for Slidey. There's not really much more to say that you can see that there would be a lot of uses for that if you wanted to use it for sliding type controls within an instrument panel within Air Manager. So that concludes uh, the video for sliders. Uh, please join me again for another video um, soon. Bye-bye.